In the preceding. We were given a graph claimed that this represents frequency versus length for some uh, pendulum count. Frequency and number of counts per some fixed unit of time, maybe counts per minute, uh, maybe counts per second, uh, versus length. And length could be in inches, feet, miles, kilometers, parsecs, whatever you wish. Um, We haven't got any numbers. We haven't got any units here. We just have the data points. And we're asked to determine the y, first sketch the curve and use the curve to determine the y factor and the power, assuming this is a power function. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to draw a good curve. Now, that is a good curve, whether that curve actually represents what I'd like it to represent, I don't know. And notice that I did assume the point at zero, zero, <coughs> because if this is a power function, the factor is less than one, which means every time we go twice as close on the x-axis, we go twice as close on the y-axis. And that means that as x approaches zero, y will approach zero as a limit. Okay, so what do we do now? And incidentally, I've got this little uh, anomaly in the way I draw these, and I think it has to do with the angle of the board and maybe the action of my shoulder. Uh, it seems that the trend of the graph kind of suddenly changes around here. Now, I stayed close to the data points, so that shouldn't be a big deal, but uh, it, it's kind of a, uh, an anomaly in my own sketching. And of course, we're going to use mathematical methods for finding the best curve. Uh, those methods are advanced if you need want to understand them. Uh, after uh, one semester, maybe two of calculus, uh, you would be in a position to understand how that's done. But right now, uh, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, your calculator has those methods built in. Okay, so now coincidentally, I did go through this last point, but it's not because I was aiming for it. And I, actually, I'm still a little bit above it. I was looking at these points, and that's just kind of where I ended up. Unconsciously, there might be some bias in what I did. And I might have unconsciously seen that out of the corner of my eye and gone ahead and hit it. Anyhow, OK, so here's one x value. And I'm just going to use uh, the divisions I've got here. So here's half of this, here's half of this, here's half of this. And I can put a point here. And then I can put a point here. Remember that there are some inaccuracies in the way I locate these points. If you do this carefully, uh, if you have the graph in front of you, you can pretty much eliminate a lot of that, a lot of the error that results from whatever the inherent tendencies of your hand or your eye have uh, the influence of those tendencies on your on your graph. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a y value here, a y value here, a y value here, and a y value here. Now, what's the factor? The y factor from here to here, uh, let's see. Well, clearly less than two, but not that much less than two. I'd say the y factor here is, and I'm going to use a little different notation. I'm going to say here, uh, y factor seems to be about 1.8. Now, from here to here, it doesn't seem to be that big. Let's see. If I take this and take half of this, which would be you know, somewhere around here, and add that, that looks like about 1.5 here. And then let's see. What's half of this? Half of this would be about here, it'd be about this big. And if I add this to that, I'm thinking the y factor here is about 1.4. 
Now remember, I said I tend to have a little glitch where I, the, the graph kind of changes between here and here, which is going to make, the, the way it changes, uh, it's going to make these factors a little low. It's going to make this factor a little high. So kind of averaging out these factors, I'm going to say that the y factor appears to be about 1.6, okay? So if the y factor is 1.6, that means what? What's the power? It's the log of the y factor. over the log of 2. Okay? So what is that? That y, that y looks a little like a 7. Okay, well, I'll leave that to you. You can work that out. You can punch the buttons in your calculator once we got our estimate of the y factor. <coughs> now, if you can get a copy of this graph, use your own estimate. And Ideally, I will have a copy of a graph of actual pendulum counts um, on the document you use to access these links, and you'll have the opportunity to work with that graph. You can print it out, and you can work with it. So you might be able to get a much better curve, much better data, and so forth.